What's up YouTube, JM Comics here, and as you, pr you all probably already know, or at least could infer, the recently released The Suicide Squad is probably one of my favorite DC movies ever made. It is just purely fun from beginning to end, and I can't think of many flaws besides Peacemaker, but we'll get to him. So today I decided to make a tier list of all the characters from the movie. That includes members of the squad, villains in the movie, and like Amanda Waller's assistant people. You know, they're kind of useless, but those people. But first, remember to like, subscribe, and comment your own tier list down below of all the Suicide Squad characters. And also, if you want my full review of the movie, or at least full-ish review, then go to my Instagram, jmcomicsarts, which I post almost every day of the week. So, go check it out. Let's get to the video. As you can see, we have five tiers. In the worst, we have bad, bad guy. You're just not a good bad guy. Decent rogue. You're okay. You, you did your job. Great evil lure. You've had a good impact on the movie, or at least you left a mark on the audience. Super villain. You're amazing. Villain of legend. You are the best character in this movie, or at least you're in the running for best character of the movie. Okay, as you can see, we have a good amount of characters to get through. So let's start off with TDK or as he calls himself, the detachable kid. And, um, okay, if you've seen the movie, I'm gonna spoil the whole movie right now, so just leave right now if you haven't seen it, or come back when to do see it. But at the beginning, half the squad dies on the beach, so a lot of characters are kind of one note. So for those characters, if they, if they were a good joke, I'll give them a higher tier, because, you know, most of them died. So TDK was one of those early people, early squad members who dies at the beginning of the movie. And compared to the rest, I'd say he left a pretty good mark. Uh, I'll put him in decent row. So he detaches his arms from his body, and it's supposed to be a joke where it's like, oh my gosh, he has a cool power, and he does nothing with it, really. And he gets shot down immediately. So I'll give him decent rogue, because the concept is cool, and I wish he was part of the real squad. Like, out of all the characters, I kind of wish he was actually on the movie more, because of just how stupid his powers are. So I'll give him decent rogue. Okay, next we have Amanda Waller, and... I would put her in super villain, but like, I'm, I might put her down later. But Viola Davis does such a good job as the actress. She's just so good at giving the craziness and the, the uptight, what do you call it, coldness that Amanda Waller has. So because of Viola Davis' performance, I put her in Villain of Legend, yeah. And she's good in both movies. Unlike most of these characters, I'd say, unlike some of the characters that return, like Rick Flagg, we'll get to him later, Amanda Waller was good in both movies because Viola Davis is just that good at the role. King Shark, automatically villain of legend. When I first went into this movie, I thought King Shark was going to be kind of a boring, like, brainless, you know what I'm saying? Like, Killer Croc was in the first movie. But I was soon proven wrong as Sylvester Stallone put such a good performance up, and the character was so funnily written. Everything he did was funny and kind of kind of heartbreaking because he has no friends, and he's like the only of his kind. So, yeah, villain of legend. King Shark was really surprising to me. Next is Bloodsport, another easy villain of legend. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to rank them like this yet. I will near the end of the, the video. So For now, I'll just keep them all in the same tier, and then I'll order the tiers later, or as I go along. Bloodsport, he's a good character. At first, just like King Shark, I had bad assumptions about him. I thought he was going to be just like Deadshot from the first movie, who was a pretty good character in the first movie, not going to lie. I thought he was going to be another repeat of that, but... He's actually quite different. While he has the same general vibes, like, oh, he has a daughter, and he wants to, like, Amanda Waller's training his daughter and all that stuff, you know. But he's more brutal than Deadshot ever was, and he has more of an edge to him than Deadshot did. So, yeah, I just elbowed it a good job. Next is Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, and if this was any other list for, like, any of the other movies she was on, I'll put her in, like, in the middle. I don't care that much about it. But on this movie, I think they really did it right. Like, I liked her scenes with Diego Luna, or whatever his name is. Not Diego Luna, what's his name? Luna something. Where she, like, beat him up, or she, like, shot him at the end. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I liked her personality in this movie better than the other movies. Like, I really didn't like her on the first movie because of her attachment to the Joker. She was just so, like, I don't know, I didn't like it. But on this movie, she stands out as her own character. So, good job, Margot Robbie. Next is Javelin. And this is one of the weirdest characters on this list because the character himself is kind of dead really early and he's kind of useless okay but his weapon is one of the main plot points of the movie so for that i'm gonna put him in the right in the middle great evil lure 
Okay, so at the beginning of the movie, Harley Quinn and him have like a relationship. I don't know if it's serious. I don't think like it's not serious. It's a joke because he has a, a cool accent and stuff. But then he gets shot on the beach, and Harley Quinn acts all dramatic about it and stuff, and she's like, "No, javelin man, my friend." <laughs> And he tells her, take my javelin, there's a purpose or something, and he gets interrupted mid-sentence. So whatever, Harley Quinn takes the javelin, and she carries it around the whole movie, and by the end, she ends up using it to stab Starro in the eye and defeat him. So, it's a cool plot point, it's a cool plot device. So, Javelin Man, as a whole, is, is pretty good, compared to the other dead people on his team. Next is Starro the Conqueror. And, uh, I would've put him in Bad Bad Guy at first. But considering like some of the depths they give him, I put him in Great Evil Good. Cause like at the end of the movie when he dies, he goes, "Oh, I was so happy looking at the stars." It gives him so much character depth that he's just like them. He's doing this against his will. He didn't want to be experimented on by the U.S. and by the Finker, but he was. So I put him in Great Evil Doer. He's a pretty cool character. And like at first, I thought he was gonna be a generic monster, sort of like King Shark and Bloodsport, how I had pre-rendered assumptions about him. But Starro ended up proving me wrong because he, you know, mind controlled people. He had that depth in. So yeah, great evil doer. Next is Mongol, and yeah, she's she's horrible, bad bad guy, stupid. The only thing you have to know about her is that a she's not Starfire, in case you're wondering. Probably the same species. I haven't looked it up. But she basically gets the whole squad. I mean, she gets Captain Boomerang killed. What a stupid like. She jumps on a helicopter during the the beach fight, and she ends up crashing the helicopter on herself and Captain Boomerang. So. So smart. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Next is uh, Luna. I don't know his first name. Silvio, right? It's Silvio Luna. Decent rogue. He's okay. I mean, he served his purpose. He was a good Harley Quinn gag, but as a character, there's nothing much to him. I mean, unlike his general acquaintance or whatever, at least he has a heart. We learned that, even though he wants to kill children, but at least he's a, a dreamer. The other guy's kind of a jerk. So look, there he is. Suarez. Suarez is a jerk, so I'll keep him in bad, bad guy. All he wants is to take over the world by destroying the US, Russia, and China, or I think those are the countries. Yeah, he's kind of a crazy terrorist, so I'm gonna leave him in bad, bad guy. He sucks. Oh no, my favorite. Polka Dot Man. Easily, villain of legend. Awesome. I know this list is gonna be very S heavy, but the squad, the main squad members were so richly developed on this movie. Yeah, he's a villain of legend. Polka Dot Man, like, he, at the beginning of the movie, he's very suicidal. He wants to kill himself because he has nothing to live for. He feels he has nothing to live for. But over the movie, over the course of the movie, he becomes part of the squad and he makes a family on the squad. He makes relationships with like Bloodsport, Ratcatcher 2, Rick Flag, and they really develop his character in a way you wouldn't expect someone as ridiculous as the Polka Dot Man to get developed. So for that, I'm putting him in Villain of Legend. And his death at the end was the most heartbreaking thing in a DC movie. I kid you not. Oh, that was so sad. Like, all of a sudden, just Squish, he's, he's gone. That was that was sad, but it was also kind of funny, so I'll keep him up there. That adds to his, that adds points. It was a funny death to a great character. Next is Ratcatcher 2, another S tier. She was the heart of the movie, let's be honest here. Bloodsport, at first it seemed like he was going to be played as a heart, but she, she really was, with her whole relationship with her father, and how she's the only person in the squad who has a heart for real. Like, Pokemon Man sort of does. But she's the only one who has a true heart. Every time someone dies, she feels bad for them. She, she has, like, the most depth of anyone here. And it's cool how Taiko Atiti is the rat catcher one. That's a, that's a cool cameo. Next is the weasel. <clears throat> um, I say he's a great evil lure. I know most people kind of hate him because he's ugly and he's repulsive. But I kind of like the design. <laughs> I think it's just funny, especially at the end. How okay, At the beginning of the movie, he drowns. He's the first death in the movie, supposedly. He literally drowns. It's kind of sad. <laughs> it's kind of funny, though. <laughs> he drowns before he even gets to the fight. By the end of the movie, it's revealed he, he's, he survived the drown, apparently. He just coughs up the water a day later, and he's completely fine. So for that amazing gag, he's a great evildoer. And he also runs off to terrorize the locals of Corto Maltese. What a freak. Just, good job, Weasel. Just, oh, yo. Next is Blackguard. Hor he's the worst character on this movie. Bad, bad guy. Horrible. He has no depth to him. He's just generic, super villain-looking guy. Who rats out his team and gets shot in the face. We don't even see him fight. We don't see his powers. There's nothing to him. There's no depth. And they use such a popular actor. I forgot his name, but he's supposed to be popular. And they, they, they kind of wasted him. So bad, bad guy. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was shock value. Bad, bad. Next is Captain Boomerang. And I hated him on the first movie. I still kind of hated him here. But because 
it was cool to get the shock value of someone from the first movie dying in the opening scene. I'll put him in decent rogues. Because Captain Boomerang, he's just a horrible person. He's like a scum. He sucks. He got Slipknot killed on the first movie. He has no regard for anybody else's life besides his own. And as the Flash showed on the first movie, he's willing to kill other villains amongst his ranks. He doesn't care about anybody else but himself. And yeah, if he hadn't returned from the first movie, like if this was his first movie appearing, I would just, I hate him already. But since, you know, he's a returning character and it was great shock, shock value at the beginning to get someone returning die, he's a decent rogue. Next is the Finker, and I put him, um, Great Evil Lure. Uh, maybe Supervillain. Mm, I'll put him in Supervillain. He's pretty good. So his whole point is that he's a mad scientist who experimented on Starro and experimented on civilians using Starro's clothes, Starro's babies or whatever. And as a villain, he does a pretty good job. He doesn't have any depth. He, there's no character arc to him like most characters on this movie, in this movie. But as, like, a mad scientist, he gets the job done. Oh, and his death is extremely satisfying. That was the best part. Of, like, one of the best deaths of the movie. He totally deserved that. <laughs> Savant. I'm gonna say uh, decent rogue. I would say bad, bad guy, but the irony of the bird eating him is just so perfect. So at the beginning of the movie, he's in jail, and he kills a bird with a ball, like a canary. And there's a theory that he did this because Black Canary put him in jail. That's kind of cool. But that's not the point. The point is he kills a canary in his jail cell. Or in his jail ditch looking thing. And then when he gets when we get to the island or whatever and they start fighting the, the loser suicide squad team, everybody around him dies, so he runs off and swims away, and then Amanda Waller blows his head off. And when his head's blown up, a bird comes to eat him and it's all full circle. So it's some good irony. So decent rook. <laughs> uh, peacemaker. Okay, this is the only member of the main squad that's not a villain of legend. I put him at the very bottom of super villain. I don't like him that. I mean, like, I like the concept, but they didn't go all in with it. And I have a reason why. It's obvious why. They didn't give him all the depth they wanted to give him because he's about to get his own TV show and they want to go into his origins and all that. So it makes sense. <clears throat> and he did kill Rick Flag. That was a cool twist. It kind of sucked, but. I sucked as a Rick Flag fan, but it was a cool twist nonetheless. So. Yeah, and I totally saw the twist coming, because in the comics, he's a Suicide Squad villain, so... It wasn't a great, like, it wasn't a surprising twist. But for the casual audience-goer, it's pretty cool. Can't wait to see what they do with him. The after credit scene was, was really surprising for me. Can't wait to see how his, his HBO Max series ends up. Next is, speaking of the dead man, Rick Flagg. Villain of legend. He's not a villain like most of these characters here. The rest of these characters here. He's, he's truly a hero. And he died a hero. Yeah, I don't know what to say about him. On the first movie, he was really bad. I didn't like him that much. All he was was the Enchantress's lover who wants to save her. It was kind of stupid. Man. There was no depth to him. On this movie, he's more developed. It gave him a funny personality. He's very comic relief -y on this movie. And when the tables turn and he finds out Amanda Waller was secretly trying to hide the U.S.'s secrets, he turns his back on his leader for the greater good. So... He proves that he's a, he's a good man, regardless of which side he's on. <clears throat> Next is Solceria. Now we got kind of the, the more boring characters, but we'll see. Solceria is... Mm, she's alright. I don't have any personal attachment to her. There's nothing great about her. She's okay. I mean, she's she leads the Freedom Fighters, and one of the funniest jokes is when Peacemaker and Bloodsport kill all of her compatriots, and they blame it on the bad guys for real. <laughs> it's just so funny. But as a character herself, she's just, she's okay. She's not bad, just not great. Next we have John Economos. He's like the warden of Belrev. I'll put him in Great Evil Lure just cause, he's, none of these characters are evil lures, but that's how the tears are. He's, he's a good character, I'd say. I mean, he's funny, he's comic relief. He makes some good puns and jokes throughout the movie. Like, oh, it's a kaiju. And at the end where he's like, oh, Peacemaker, what if it, like, yeah, you know, she, he just, he's a good character. So I'll keep him in Great Evil Lure. He's better than the rest of these people I'm about to get to. Wait, except for Mil- Oh, Milton. Milton is a supervillain. <laughs> he is part of the best joke of the movie. So Milton's the driver for the whole squad when they're in Court of Maltese and in the city. And he follows them when they go into Project Jotunheim and he gets shot. Everyone's like, nobody really cares except for Pokemon Man. He's like, oh my gosh, Milton died. 
Harley Quinn's like, who's Milton? And Bloodsport's like, why did Milton come of us? It's it's the best joke in the whole movie. So for that, Milton, you're a supervillain. Good job, Milton. Rest in peace. Next is Amelia Harcourt, and she's kind of okay. I mean, there's nothing special about her. She's not as actively bad as those three, but she's just okay. There's nothing great about her. Nothing that out of the ordinary. Next is Flo, Florence Crowley. And I'd say she's better than Amelia. I don't know if she's better than John, but I'm going to leave her under John just because John is the comic. Like, John has more puns and lines and stuff. But she does knock Amanda Waller now. That's pretty cool. Mm, I might switch them later. I'll come back to that. Finally, we have Briscoe, the pilot. I literally added him because he's from the comics and it's just a cool reference. So I'm going to leave him in Decent Rogue for that reference, but he's not great. Okay, now we're done with the actual characters. Now let me rearrange them in the proper order. So for super villain list, I put Peacemaker at the end because he wasn't well developed. Uh, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great Evil Lures, I might move Javelin Man up. Uh, or Weasel. I'll move Javelin up just because of that ongoing joke. <laughs> and Weasel, I'll also move him up to super villain. The rest of these guys are okay here. And I'd move TDK up, because unlike those guys who are just boring, they don't have much of a use, he has a use. I mean, like, he's more captivating to me than them. So I'd keep him... Mm. I'd say this is a good order. Yeah. Should I put Sorcery at the end? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, maybe I'd put Solceria over TDK. Because she kind of has, like, a bigger role in the movie. She definitely has a bigger role in the movie. So There. And for this row, uh, I'll put Captain Boomerang in the front. Then Savant, because that was a great running joke. Or a great piece of irony. Okay, and then the hardest thing is going to be to arrange the Villains of Legend. Uh, I'll put Schwarbez over Mongol first, though. Because Mongol and Blackguard are the most useless members of the squad. Suarez, he's doing his job at least. Like, he's getting, he's doing what he was meant to do. Be a villain. These guys are supposed to, like, help their squad and they just screw everybody else over. Mm, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. So, Villain of Legend is where I'm going to have to start, like, getting really precise and specific with my ranking. I'd, mm, Amanda Waller, I'd probably put her at the end of the list when it comes to these characters. At least in this movie. So, Ratcatcher, she's probably the best character in this movie. Let's be honest. Like, let's. If I'm being completely honest here, without any bias to Pokemon Man or whatever, she's the best villain here. Because she, or the best character here, not the best villain. Because <clears throat> she has the most heart. She's like the core of the team. I mean, if Pokemon Man is more funny and like, captain. Then I put King Shark, actually, he has a lot of heart. Then Bloodsport. Then Pokemon Man. Yeah. Well, I put Pokemon Man over Bloodsport just because he has less similarities to other characters. Because Bloodsport's kind of a dead shot. Like I told you, it's a lot like dead shot. Then Harley Quinn in this movie. Then Rick Flag. And then maybe I'll move Amanda Waller down. Uh. Mm. I mean, it was a good performance. I'm going to leave her in Villain of Legend. <clears throat> okay. So that's it. There's my list of all the Suicide Squad characters. Whether they're members of the squad, actual villains, or members of Ama Amanda Waller's team. Ranked on a tier list. Comment down below your own tier list. Remember to like sub and subscribe for more superhero and supervillain content as well as Nintendo content. Jim Comics signing off.